Hello everybody, Dark Skeleton here, and in this video I wanted to talk to you guys about building budget decks inside of Hearthstone. So first off, a budget deck usually involves a low amount of dust, but what kind of decks usually go good for a budget deck? Well in most cases, control decks are completely out of the question. And the reason for that is that control decks tend to try to stall out until you can draw key legendary cards. And these key legendary cards cost a lot of dust. So in terms of a late game control warrior, you would be talking about cards like Brawl, obviously. Also cards like Darius Crawley fit into a lot of those kinds of decks. And some other epics that are almost considered necessary would be things like a Super Collider. You can see I don't have those at the moment. Then over in Mage, you'd be talking about cards like Frost Lich Jaina for sure. These cards are so important for those kinds of decks that if you don't have cards like Frost Lich Jaina and you're trying to build a control mage deck, it simply doesn't work. So building those decks and trying to play viably are basically cut out of the go from the start. But what you might notice if you look on the lower end of mana curves is that a lot of the commons actually tend to be between, say, 1 and 5 cost cards. So these low cost cards aren't necessarily bad, but more directed towards a earlier game style just by the nature of mana cost. So for instance, a perfect example of a low cast card, which is really powerful, but is more directed towards early game playstyle, would be Crackling Razor Maw. So this is a 2 mana 3-2 Battlecry Adaptive Friendly Beast, which means you can basically give a free buff onto a beast that's already on the field, making it great in decks that play one drop beasts. Um, because obviously you have a 3-2 and then a Adapt might get you a plus one plus one, so it's kind of like a 2 mana 4-3 except that plus one plus one bonus can also be used immediately to attack face or trade into something. A fantastic card if you're playing an early game or mid-range beast deck. In Rogue, you have some really strong commons such as Blink Fox, so Odd Rogue has been a thing for quite a while, a really strong deck that is mostly about ending the game before things get too out of control, so it just puts a lot of pressure on the board. First, with having really strong early game cards, but secondly, the 2-2 dagger you can equip when you have Beku the Moon Eater is incredibly strong. So just as a general rule, the higher your mana cost goes, the more likely the card you're considering putting in your deck is going to be either an epic or a legendary, which doesn't really conform well to a budget playstyle. As a result, most of the budget decks that are actually kind of usable would be either very aggressive, where you put a lot of early game stuff in your deck and you try to close out the game as soon as possible, and then the mid-range deck tries to put on a little bit more pressure over time by playing really big, hard-to-remove cards. The classic example in mid-range hunter would be Savannah High Main, a 6-5 that death rattles into two 2-2 two, two wolves if it is destroyed. So it's a very hard-to-remove card and can do a lot of damage. Aside from that, a lot of budget decks would tend to be pretty cheesy. So Divine Spirit Inner Fire decks from Priest, which try to build a minion up to a really high life total, give it Inner Fire, and then hit the opponent's face for usually an OTK or something close to that. I mean, you can make a 16-16 or 32-32 pretty easily in that kind of deck. Um, and then you just close out the game before it gets too late. So a cheesy combo deck is an example there. But most combo decks I would not say are budget, because a lot of combo decks revolve around cards like Maligos, which is a legendary dragon. So these decks that aren't necessarily aggro and aren't mid-range, but are still kind of budgety, tend to be more along the lines of the cheesy variety. So we can actually take a look at an example here. Uh, this is a budget Mechathun deck that I grabbed off of Heart that I grabbed off of Hearth Pwn today. So it's one of the ones people are taking a look at a lot, and apparently uh, the guy who made this was able to hit Legend with it. So we take a look at this budget Mechathun deck, and what do you notice in it? It's got a lot of common spells that are kind of one cost, two cost. Like I was saying, most of the really cheap spells tend to actually be more along the lines of common or rare. And then there's just a bunch of card draw cards. So Acolyte of Pain, common. Gadget Sand Auctioneer, really key in this deck, but still a rare. And then the only legend is the Mechathun. So you might have a budget deck that has one legend in it. Uh, Mechathun would be an example, uh, but also pretty much any modern hunter deck until the rotation as the Year of the Dragon enters play requires Deathstalker Hunter, just because it's such a powerful card. But in this case, Mechathun is what the deck is based around. So if you've never seen a Mechathun deck be played, it basically involves you drawing your whole deck and then you destroy your own Mechathun, in this case with Naturalize. And if you have all of the cards in your hand in deck played already, 
and then you have nothing on the battlefield, then destroying your own mech then wins you the game. So it's basically draw your whole deck, play your whole deck, and then just instantly win the game with a cheesy mech then finish. Not the same as a control deck, which tries to run your opponent out of stuff. In fact, if you were to play a control deck versus Mechathune, Mechathune would probably win because Mechathune isn't trying to interact with the board, it's just trying to play everything out. And control decks tend to stall around and not really have much aggression, so they just lose to Mechathune. So in this case, I would be missing two cards here, which is Mechathune and Branching Paths. Uh, you can also see those are probably the more expensive cards in the deck. So you should probably try to build a budget deck that already includes the expensive cards that you would need. And then the commons you have to craft aren't going to set you back too much in terms of dust. So if you already had Mechathune, pretty much crafting a branching paths and having most of the uh, really common stuff that you would get out of booster packs anyway from the classic set, from the Rastakhan Rumble set, um, puts together this deck pretty easily. So all-inclusive, this is a 3,180 dust cost deck, 1,600 of that being Mechathun. So if you already have Mechathun, you're already halfway there, and I'm sure you have at least some of these commons if you've been playing for any period of time. So that's a pretty good deck that actually seems to be relatively viable. As I mentioned, uh, the guy hit Legend with it, and I'll include links to these decks in the description as well if you feel like checking them out. So let's move on to the second one, Budget Midrange Hunter. Hunter is probably the classic class for building any kind of budget deck because it tends to just have a lot of really strong classic cards that fit into aggressive or mid-range playstyles quite easily. So you can see cards here like Candle Shot, Dire Mole, Spring Paw, those are all commons. Once again, a lot of the commons happen to be one drops or two drops. So if you look up to about the first 14, 15 cards in the deck, everything up to a two drop they're all commons and then you look at uh, the three drops animal companion kill command those are actually uh, free cards from the basic set and these cards are so incredibly powerful that they're pretty much in every hunter deck and almost have been in every hunter deck at least ones that revolve around beasts because animal companion summoning a strong beast and kill command three mana deal five damage that can target face or minions obviously really strong so you look at the rest of the stuff and it's pretty much standard fare here. Uh, Dio Frenzy, not a card that's that commonly included in Hunter, but you can see Flanking Strike, just a really solid strong card included in lots of Hunter decks. Wind Blast, not too bad if a minion died, it's one mana deal four. And we look up to Savannah High Main at the top end. And we look up to Savannah High Main at the top end. So really the only cards that are costing a lot of dust here are Deathstalker Rexar. So if you've been playing a Hunter deck ever since Frozen Throne, which I think is almost a year and a half old at this point, um, then Deathstalker Rexar is just a given in every Hunter deck. It is such an incredibly powerful card that you could play a deck without it, but if you draw Deathstalker Rexar, pretty much your odds of winning go up dramatically. Getting those zombies is insanely powerful, and uh, arguably a card that maybe should have never been printed, but it exists at least until the rotation. So once the rotation comes around, and you should keep rotations in mind when you're talking about building your next deck because, well, it won't be playable in standard anymore. So for instance, if you want to play Hunter and Deathstalker Vexar is the only card you're missing, you're not trying to hit Legend, then maybe just ignore that for right now, simply because in less than a month it'll no longer be a standard card. So aside from that, Master's Call would be something pretty cool to pick up. If you have only beasts in your deck, then it's a three mana draw three beasts that's insanely strong. And two of those would set you back 800 dust. But if you have both of these already included, then you look at everything else in the deck and it's pretty much just commons that you're probably likely to have anyway. So in total, this is a 3200 dust deck, 2400 of which is included in these three cards. So if you're really lacking on the dust, you could, of course, ignore these cards, just put in some substitute back in. For instance, if you don't have a Deathstalker Vexar, you could probably use a second Savannah High Main and not suffer too much for it, because it's still a mid-range hunter deck, and it will still perform reasonably solidly. But if you already happen to have these three cards and you're trying to build your budget deck, then pretty much everything else is golden and you're good to go. So that's one example of Hunter. Doing it with traps would be another pretty cheap option. Um, let's take a look at Keldemar's Elemental Mage. So decks that revolve around a tribe are one other possibility. So pretty much in the current meta, that would be beast decks, which you're talking about Hunter, uh, Elemental decks and Mage, 
And then you could argue Dragon Priest is also something that can kind of be done in a budget variety. So if we take a look at this deck list, uh, one thing that does stand out to me is that it doesn't have Frost Lich Jaina, but you could maybe argue it doesn't necessarily need it. Because it's possible you can try to close the game out before turn 9, before turn 10, or very soon after that. Now kind of the more competitive version of this would be more of a control deck, which includes Frost Lich Jaina and then the big mage spells. But you can see that with tribe cards, you can get cards that have pretty powerful effects if you happen to play them all together in one package. Um, now, I probably wouldn't try to hit Legend with a deck like this, but you can see cards that aren't too expensive, like Steam Surger. 4 mana 5 4, if you played an elemental last turn, add a free spell to your hand, a Flame Geyser, is actually a really strong card if you take it by itself, and assuming you're playing an elemental deck. Uh, Lesser Ruby Spellstone, if you play a bunch of elementals, you can build up to a 2 mana, add 3 random spells to your hand, which is very good value. Arcanal Sword, I'd be kind of interested to try, because there's the 4 mana version of this, which involves dragons and is a priest card. And that card is incredibly strong. That's a dust breaker, of course. Um, but at 6 mana is a 3 mana, 3-3, three, three, deal 3 damage to all other minions. Actually bad, because that's still a really strong AoE effect. So arguably, you can play that common and it's not too bad. Um, cards like Servant of Kalismos, Bonfire Elemental, getting extra card value uh, simply by playing it in an elemental package really strong kind of puts this type of deck together. And then Elemental Evocation is a pretty cool card that they added in the last set. So the next elemental you play this turn costs two less. That's effectively old Innovate, which was in almost every Druid deck that I can remember, for elemental decks only. And that's not too bad. Uh, being able to kind of play your hand out a little bit quicker is important because Servant of Kalismos and Bonfire Elemental, those kind of cards are going to give you a lot more extra cards in your hand, but you want to end the game before the control decks just walk over you. So all in all, this deck isn't too bad either, and it's actually incredibly cheap to build, 1560 dust. You could argue, well, yeah, you could put Frost Lich Jaina in it, and it might be stronger. Yeah, Frost Lich Jaina would help you close out some games, kind of in the same way that Deathstalk or Vexar would, where it's just such an insanely powerful card that you can put it in any deck that can get to that point, and your win percentage goes up. Um, but it could be okay without having that as well. Okay, so here's an example that I put together. So a budget token deck, the idea of basically aggressive druid decks for a long time has been build a giant board of stuff and then end the game with Savage Roar. You could also try Evolving Spores. I find it's actually not too bad either. Sometimes you can get plus three attack. Sometimes you can make all your minions poisonous and uh, regain the board. Or getting a result like Wind Fury isn't too bad either. So often you can get a pretty good result. It's permanent if the game lasts longer than that turn as well. So this would kind of give you four ways to close the game out, and Savage Roar costs no dust, Evolving Spore, 200 dust there. So we just take a look at the cards in the deck, and this is really to point out how a lot of the decent early game cards are actually common. Firefly has been staple pretty much since Angoro. As far as I'm aware, it still fits into decks like Elementals, odd cost decks such as Odd Rogue, uh, may still put Firefly in. It's a pretty competitive option, and it's a common. Uh, Mecharoo. If you're trying to build a token deck, that kind of card is pretty good because even if they kill it, you still get a guy. So it's pretty hard to remove off the board and it's obviously going to work well with cards like Knife Juggler, Power of the Wild, Savage Roar, Evolving Spores. So the idea of this deck list would simply just be put a lot of stuff on the board, um, hope your opponent can't remove them all turn after turn, and then if you happen to draw Savage Roar, Evolving Spores while you have a board on the field, then you pretty much just win. And that's kind of the idea of aggro. You don't try to play the game where you outvalue these control decks that have 15,000 dust to put every perfect legendary into play. You just try to finish the game before it gets to that point. And, uh, if that's, and if that's your gameplay, there are just so many cheap options you can include for your deck. So Eggnapper might not be the most ideal choice, but a 3 mana 3 1 that death rattles into 2 1 1 raptors, uh, that can create a lot of tokens, and it may be too hard for the average control deck to remove that if the game is before turn 5, turn 6. Uh, Crypt Lord, I think, is an insanely underrated card. Uh, after you summon a minion, gain plus 1 health, it's a 3 mana 1 6. It is actually really hard to get through that, especially if you're playing a token deck. Getting it up to a 110 is not out of the question at all. And if it's important for your opponent to remove your guys and they have a Crypt Lord in the way, then hey, they might not be able to do it and then you just Savage Roar and win. 
So aggro does really well for a budget deck. So I mentioned earlier the idea of a Divine Spirit Inner Fire Priest. So let's go ahead and build that as well. So new deck, Priest. And this is going to work because early game spells tend to be common or rare for the most part. So in a Divine Spirit Inner Fire deck, we need Inner Fire, obviously. Uh, we can use the Divine Spirit as a requirement. Power Wood Shield. Note that this isn't even a common, it's a basic card. And I'm not sure if uh, modern decks are actually playing Topsy Turvy or Inner Fire, but it's up to you. Uh, the reason you would play Topsy Turvy over Inner Fire, aside from the mana cost deduction, is because one drops can still be destroyed by this Skulking Geist card that you might run into in control decks. Unless you're trying to play at Legend, though, I doubt it's going to matter too much what you pick, whether it's Inner Fire or Topsy Turvy. Uh, you could put both in the deck, maybe. Let's actually just do that for right now, and we'll see if it makes sense in the end. Four is probably too many of these cards. Um, but then we can take a look at other options here. So Radiant Elemental definitely goes in this kind of deck, because uh, making cheap spells cheaper is really strong. Shadow Visions. Uh, I wouldn't call this a budget card because it's an epic, but if you do happen to have Shadow Visions or you have 800 dust to invest, this would definitely be a card you want in this kind of deck because it allows you to pull Divine Spirit out of your deck or Inner Fire if you need that. Uh, basically, you get whatever spell you need and then that allows you to win more because you're a combo deck. So if we're building a budget version of the deck, something like a Sand Drudge might be worth considering. Whenever you cast a spell, summon a 1-1 one, one zombie with taunt. That's a common. Uh, obviously, you're going to be playing lots of spells, so getting free 1-1s one, to block stuff is pretty good. If you can read this as, you're pretty much guaranteed to play one spell, so kind of like a 3-mana 4-4. Four, four, that's not too bad, and this is kind of a card they have to remove too. Uh, so let's keep going here. What else? It's debatable whether Lyra the Sun Shard would be good for this kind of deck because you're trying to combo as fast as possible, not really to get extra value. So you might not even need that, but if you had Lyra, you could consider that as well. Okay, so let's start putting some minions in the deck. Uh, what do you need for an inner fire deck? You need high health minions. So what could be a high health minion which is good for this? Uh, Twilight Drake is pretty commonly played. Gets plus one health for each card in your hand. Uh, Tar Creeper is another really good option. Basically, this is a 3-mana three 3-5 three, with Taunt. And the fact that the attack only matters on your opponent's turn doesn't really matter for an Inner Fire deck, because when you Inner Fire, it's going to get attack equal to its health. Witchwood Grizzly is probably another option, which is pretty good. And that actually gives me an idea here. So this card gets a negative drawback when you play it, but you can silence it back to a 12 health minion. So what we could do is put in Silence into the deck, which synergizes really well with Sand Drudge down here as well. A zero cost spell with an effect, and maybe you get a 1-1 one, one zombie off of that. So good value there with a Witchwood Grizzly. Oh, of course, Northshire Cleric, forgetting about that one. So Northshire Cleric is a one drop that's absolutely essential for, I would say, most priest decks, but definitely in an inner fire deck that revolves around a card draw engine. Uh, this will help you draw a lot of cards. And uh, in addition to that, Wild Pyromancer is a classic card, really good for dealing damage to AoE on the field, and when you AoE your own field, it allows you to draw more cards with Northshire Cleric, which allows you to win the game sooner. So a couple options to include with that would be Circle of Healing, a really classic combo for Northshire Cleric and Wild Pyromancer, but you could also try Divine Hem, another combo, restore 6 health to all friendly characters. I think because it's more of an aggressive deck, you would want Circle of Healing instead of Divine's, uh, Divine Hem, though. So let's see, what else are we missing? Uh, probably more card draw or high health minions. So Acolyte of Pain is a decent option to consider here. Uh, so Acolyte of Pain, uh, you draw more cards with this. Really good with Wild Pyromancer if you want to draw through your whole deck. Which you kind of do with the Inner Fire deck. And say that you're missing some of these cards, like you don't have Witchwood Grizzly. Well there's lots of other high health minions you can pull from, especially in kind of the early game pool. So taking a look at this deck list, you can probably cut something like one copy of Topsy Turvy or one copy of Inner Fire. Um, not exactly sure where the sweet spot is in terms of that, but throwing other cards into your deck like a common Serenite Taskmaster is not a bad option. A pretty solid early game card for fighting for the board. You don't really care about the free agent because you're going to finish the game in one turn with a Inner Fire combo anyway. Um, and if you're missing some of these other cards, it's pretty easy to substitute them. For instance, you could even play something like a Gurubashi Berserker or something else like a Fungal Enchanter for more card draw in combination with Northshire Cleric. And also restoring health allows you to Divine Spirit combo more easily by restoring that health up to a high base number. 
So there's a lot of options that are actually available for you in this kind of deck. And really the only thing you have to have is being able to draw your Divine Spirit, Inner Fire. I would say Shadow Visions is really important, but aside from that, everything else is really cheap and pretty easily swappable. And that's just one more example of a budget deck you can pretty easily build even in today's meta. Now, let's say that you want to try out a lot of different cards, but you're not exactly trying to be competitive. Well, there's a really great kind of budget card that you can try out called Whizbang the Wonderful. So Whizbang the Wonderful is going to give you a deck that corresponds with the 18 decks, two for each class. And these 18 decks are the auto-suggested decks that Blizzard provides for you, but even if you don't have all the cards in those decks, in which case they actually cost quite a bit more than 1600 dust, um, then you can try those decks for free in a random rotation. So these decks would include stuff like Wings of War currently, the Boomsday Project. So trying these would allow you to play with cards like Dr. Boom, Mad Genius, Countess Ashmore, but without actually having those cards. You can see how these kind of require like four legends to build, even though they're suggested decks. And then Wings of War over here, you can see Ysera, Harrison Jones, Warmaster Rune. That's already 4,800 dust right there. Now these decks aren't the best, and actually you might be able to build a better budget deck that's more competitive than these. But if you just want to try a lot of decks out, then Whizbang the Wonderful is a decent card to have. So this card can be crafted for 1,600 dust, obviously. I went with the golden version because I wanted all my cards to be golden when I played it. Um, but yeah, 1600 dust can get you access to 18 decks. And on top of that, with the new solo content that's going to be coming out in the first expansion, there's going to be a card called Zail Shadow Cloak that you can get by completing all of the five solo adventure wings there, which will give you a card that's very similar to Whizbang the Wonderful. Basically additional Blizzard crafted decks that allow you to try things out before you go ahead and craft them. However, it's worth mentioning that without paying money in order to get those wings, I believe the first one's free, but the other four are 700 gold each. So that sets you back 2,800 gold total. So if you want that, uh, you can kind of start saving for it. Of course, if you do complete all five wings, you do get 15 packs as well. So it's not as if you're paying all of the gold just to get that one card. So that's pretty much all I can say about budget decks in Hearthstone as of early 2019. Main takeaways from the video, stay away from heavy control decks because that's going to be really hard to win with unless you have a lot of dust to get the perfect deck lists. Try to go for decks that either have an early game plan or involve using a lot of early game cards such as Inner Fire or Mechathune. Notice how all the cards in those decks are really, really cheap and therefore commons. And taking a look at synergies such as beasts, hunters, or dragons in the case of priests are another decent way to look into building your deck. So that's going to be it for this video. I've been Dark Skeleton. I hope you got something out of this video on how to build budget decks in Hearthstone. Let me know what you think down in the comments and I will see you in my future videos.